This podcast is brought to you by Kempower, the reliable, quick, and scalable EV charging solutions for everyone and everywhere. And Star Charge, the largest EV charging manufacturer in the world and is also a provider of residential and commercial battery storage. Hello, friends, and welcome back to the Out of Spec podcast. I'm Francie. If you don't know me, nice to meet you. And if you do know me, welcome back. We are having very sunny, warm weather here today, which is very much drawing me outside. So I'll try to keep this short but informative. Thank you for joining me today. I'm very excited to see the blooms come out once springs roll, spring rolls around. Um, and I've been talking to a lot of people in my life lately uh, about a similar topic, and that's around federal funding and specifically the funding of not just new electric vehicle infrastructure, but fixing and repairing infrastructure that was put in however long ago. And I think generally the funding that we've seen go into this space has done a lot of good, will do some good, but how is funding going to exactly be used to repair projects that are, you know, broken chargers or vandalism or in other maintenance needs. And it makes me think about, well, where does the responsibility really lie? Where did it rely when they put in the chargers? Why does it rely on federal funding now? So keep that in mind as we go through this topic of federal funding used to repair broken EV charging stations. And keep in mind where you think res responsibility should lie. And I'd love to read your thoughts in the comments uh, once, once you hear about this. So on January 18th, 2024, the Biden administration announced funding, specifically $325 million in new investments across three programs to increase the reliability and resilience of publicly accessible chargers, advance EV technologies, and support workforce development for EV charging deployment and maintenance. Sounds good. This is on top of plenty other funding that they have put directly into the electric vehicle infrastructure in the United States, which we have covered on previous podcasts. For instance, on January 11th of 2024, the Biden administration announced an additional 200, no, $623 million in grants to continue building out the EV charging network, specifically to support 47 projects in 22 states and Puerto Rico, resulting in approximately 7,500 EV charging ports being added for public charging. And you can check out all of those details on that specific story on podcast 238 of the Out of Spec podcast. So now back to this lump of money. It's $149 million in grants to repair or replace non-operational EV chargers with a goal of putting 4,500 EV charging ports back online. Can't really complain about that, but I do have questions. There are 40, no, 24 grant recipients in 20 states, and it's part of the NEVI program, the $5 billion National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Formula Program launched by the Biden administration. This is a kind of joint led by the Federal Highway Administration and the Joint Office of Energy and Transportation. The first site funded by NEVI funding went live in December of 2023, just west of Columbus, Ohio. And I covered that. I actually spoke to the Ohio uh, team, Drive Ohio team, and you can check that out in episode 223. To date, more than $2.4 billion has been made available through the NEVI program. As I said earlier, this news about this lump sum for repairing EVs comes out or came out just one week after the White House announced the $623 million from the Charging and Fueling Infrastructure Plan, which are grants that will also support American jobs in the Made in America network, which is definitely a focus of all this funding, not only creating jobs in this new growing industry, but also to support the manufacturing of this hardware that is going into the ground in the U.S. being built in the U.S. So what has exactly led these chargers that are in need of repair to be so under the weather, to need all of this funding? Well, the funding is supposed to help fix chargers that are temporarily unavailable due to maintenance issues, vandalism, or power problems. So maintenance issues could be that there's not enough people to come out and maintain them or something. Vandalism kind of explains itself in power problems. Perhaps you don't have the right equipment. You thought that you would be able to get the power that you needed, but you didn't. You know, these are kind of general terms, but it's also interesting that these are temporarily unavailable because I'm wondering... If they're temporarily unavailable, then why isn't the site host or the charge point operator already 
fix these. <laughs> uh, it does seem to not be the ones that are kind of in a weird spot, maybe never been used, sitting unused, growing cobwebs, and instead this temporarily unavailable category of EV charging. But my question again comes in where, where does the responsibility lie? Why is the government coming in to specifically fund this? And I know it's in our interest. We would love to repair these sites, uh, but I just want to get everything straight. So I looked to see what the grant application looked like. Um, the link is not live, though it is linked on multiple pages listed within the DOT and the administration's page. But I can see who was awarded these funds because this grant was submitted back in November by whoever wanted it. And no surprise, California has come in first with the amount of funding, 64 million of these dollars. So like I said, it's not exactly the newest of news, but I haven't covered it yet. So I certainly wanted to make sure we were all on the same page. And it was interesting because multiple folks had brought up, you know, it's interesting that we're getting all this money to repair EV chargers. Why don't they just work in the first place? Whose responsibility is it? What are the eligibility and requirements to get funding to receive this kind of investment into your state's local EV charging? So Maybe you don't care where the money comes from. Just use it, fix the chargers. But here's the details in case you are concerned or curious. Because the government is giving out money to states to get chargers repaired, I want to know the requirements for fixing those chargers, what makes them eligible, uh, and who can really take advantage of this. So, of course, I looked into how everyone is able to apply and shared that, and I'm going to share that with you. So eligible applicants include state departments of transportation and local governments. States and localities are encouraged to coordinate to the extent possible possible to address broken and non-operational chargers, and applicants are strongly encouraged to work directly with site hosts and current owners or operators to ensure the viability of the project. I would say projects are not viable if you're not working with the people who own, operate, bought them, etc. So what is the definition of what is a like the repair and replace? So you can either get this fund to replace or repair. So repair projects can include Hardware and labor costs up to, but not including, full replacement of EV chargers and intrinsically related equipment necessary to ensure that broken or non-operational chargers resume a fully operational status for at least five years, function as intended by the manufacturer, duh, and comply with 23 CFR 680, in which I looked that up and the purpose of this part, as it says online, is to prescribe minimum standards and requirements for projects funded under the National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Formula Program. So it seems like you got to comply with NEVI. So replace, what do they mean by replace? These projects can include hardware, permitting, service upgrade, and labor costs necessary to remove broken or non-operational EV chargers from service and at the same location install the new chargers that one remain optional for five years. Yes, function as intended by the manufacturer. And thirdly, again, with comply with 23 CFR 680. They do add that broken or non-operational equipment replaced through this, through this program cannot be redeployed through any other federally funded program and must either be recycled or scrapped. Interesting to see what will happen with those. I, of course, would love also anyone who has been a part of this project in any state to come onto the podcast and let us know how this went, you know, identifying all of these projects within your state. You know, if you're California getting $64 million, you had to prove that you needed it. So that would be definitely interesting. And I will reach out about that. So does now about eligibility, you know, do your sites, are they eligible for funding? Does the EV infrastructure require repair or replacement? And are there proposed activities eligible? Of course, that's question number one. Number two, that this grant application asks, does the application include an adequate plan for ongoing ownership and stewardship? This is most important. If you don't have anyone who's going to own this site, to steward this site, why would you put any money into it? Just pluck it out. Is a broken charger more valuable than no charger at all? Ability to meet 12-month timeline for charger to be operational. Sure, take a year, I guess. And then availability of 20% match. So there's this stipulation to the funding. So the max maximum federal share, the federal share shall not exceed 80% of the total projected cost, and awardees must provide at least 20% of the total project cost as a matching share. Funding can be used for both publicly and privately owned charging infrastructure. Funding can be used for both DC fast charging and level two infrastructure. Funded chargers under this NOFO should be operational within 12 months. We knew that. And recipients are encouraged to start work on all chargers as soon as possible to ensure that repairs for chargers in disadvantaged communities are not delayed. 
or and insure. So they're considering, of course, the disadvantaged communities portion and the fact that do not sit on this, please get going. But there's no exact timeline of when you have to start, which also does make sense. I think that uh, there are different stipulations for different sites, different circumstances that arise, but ASAP is basically what they're saying. Of course, there was more to the announcement that I want to cover as well, and one is about EV school buses. So on January 8th, 2024, the administration announced $1 billion towards electrifying or awarding clean school buses. So they're replacing over 23,000 buses at 372 school districts. They're purchasing about 2,700 school buses, and they are prioritizing low-income rural or tribal communities who are getting 86% of the funding. Who doesn't want their kid driving on a cleaner way of transportation? Additionally, this school buses open up a really cool opportunity for vehicle to grid or vehicle to everything, where you can take the energy that just kind of sits in school buses, because they only really drive around twice a day, and not on the weekends and not in the summer, to store energy, collect energy and put it back onto the grid or into a school or into a building when that is needed, if that is needed. Really cool idea. On January 18th, 2024, they also announced $131 million for research and development for zero emission vehicles and mobility. We saw similar things come out of the Trump administration as well that happened under the Trump administration, but were put forward by the Obama administration. And on January 19th, 2024, they also provided guidelines for EV charging tax credits because things changed in 2024, hoping to get Max uh, from the Out of Spec Guide channel onto the podcast soon to talk about kind of how tax incentives have changed. Up to 30% off the cost of the charger to individuals and businesses in low-income communities and non-urban areas. So that's cool. Um, of course, chargers are very expensive to put in. There's you know, putting lines underground, there's the actual hardware, there's all the work with the utilities, there's making sure you have the power, and that is expensive. On January 19th, 2024, of course, this is all this year, they also announced a further $46 million awarded through Ride and Drive Electric Program, and this award aims to improve EV, EV charging and make it more reliable and equitable. We're hearing this over and over again. If that's not the goal, then what is? Examples of this funding include Oregon Tradeswoman Inc., they are recruiting and training people from all backgrounds for electrical apprenticeships. We're definitely going to need more and more people in this field as things go electric in general. And also the University of Buffalo is receiving funding to develop uh, a plan for New Jersey's transit electrification. So pretty cool. Uh, interesting funding. I thought it's just good to Yes, it's good that we're getting funding to repair chargers, uh, and I just hope that we're picking the right chargers to, to repair, the right strategies with which to do it, and using the money really effectively, but also looking forward, putting chargers in places that are smart, and they're utilized, and they're cared for by the site host or the charge point operator, whatever it is, and also designing the hardware for the future, thinking far ahead. And we will also have podcasts on that as well in terms of, you know, how are we scaling the infrastructure? How is it becoming dependable and reliable? Because the way we do it now, I don't think is the most perfect way to do it. So let me know your thoughts in the comments about where responsibility lies, how this kind of funding can really do its best work and how states can implement it. And of course, I hope to get some representatives who have received this funding and hear about even, you know, the application process, but also once they get these grants, how they're going to enact them. Thank you so much again for plugging into the Out of Spec podcast with me for another electrical episode on some EV news. If you're enjoying it, let us know. You know how. And of course, please tune in next time. Can't wait to see you there on the next Out of Spec podcast. Please enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye, friends. Mm -hmm.